mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. By this day, she's a fair lady. Hello, up to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, where there's much ado about nothing with Josh Sweden. If thou dost love fair hero, thou shalt have her. I give myself for you. What struck me when I, when I watched the film, there was just an amazing energy that emanates on the screen, and it just looked like everybody was having such a lot of fun making this. Was that right? That is right. I mean, everybody was working very hard, um, but, uh, but the joy in the room was, diffi was difficult to contain. Is, um, is a contemporary piece of, Sha of Shakespeare. Do you think by making it and setting it in the modern day it makes it more accessible to audiences that know your more current work? I think it does. I think in general um, what we wanted to capture was a little bit the spirit of the readings we did which is very casual and intimate and obviously everybody dressed up in suits and we shot it in black and white but there is this thing of you know taking it out of the very stately you know big collars and buckled shoes and saying you know this could just be now this really it just it feels so contemporary when we read it together we wanted to convey some of that and you mentioned um, about shooting it in black and white because you shot on a Canon uh, 5D is that correct and a red we shot the red epic or our AMB camera and then we had a Canon 5D when we'd run three because obviously we needed to get as much footage as possible and we wanted to get it all at the same time so that you get that feeling of performance, the immediacy of it. Did it did, I mean, the fit, there is a, a real cinematic feel, a touch and feel to the film. Was that done in camera with, with lots of lighting or was that created in post? Well, no, I mean, uh, the, uh, you know, Jay Hunter lit it very specifically to, to what we wanted to do, which was something casual but elegant. We wanted to feel a little bit like we were, we were in there with them, but at the same time they're, they're the, the light is a little bit beautiful. Um, but we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't really do anything to it in post except, you know, time out the, the black and white to make the, to make the cameras match. And, and, and also can't not mention Shakespeare and your love of Shakespeare. Can you tell us about much of it about nothing and, and why it was that particular piece of Shakespeare's work that you wanted to make? Well, I think it's a very, a very interesting text about love and, and how we behave and how we're expected to and sort of the constructions of it. And, and I'd always enjoyed Beatrice and Benedict and never more than when Amy and Alexis played it at our house. Um, and that's part of why I wanted to film it. But really when I read the play, I see a lot of pain and a lot of, a lot of really interesting motivations and, and, and observations about what fools we are. I will bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection. Are you sure Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? What a great film as well. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting as well watching the film because there was such a great energy watching it. Everybody looked like they were having a great time. I think, I think that's my favorite part of watching it is it really feels like watching it the way we felt when we were making it. You know, it was a frantic 12-day shoot, but it really energized everybody and made everyone excited and I mean, the people in the movie have been hanging out for the two years since then. Every week you get a much ado reunion party. So. You had a very unusual location. Uh, and the, yeah, the most, if you just shut the house that Kai built, it would be a movie that I would watch any day. You didn't even need people talking. Their house is so amazing and beautiful. And she came over and brought floors back from France. And it's just a dream, a dream house. And with regards to the characters, Much Ado About Nothing is one of the lighter love stories of Shakespeare. Yet the, both the um, lead characters are, are complex, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, one of m my biggest dream roles ever. So uh, getting to to play this part, I, I think what's fun is what Joss brought to it, which is obviously in the play to begin with, but, but getting to do the high comedy and the tragedy and just melding them together. And it's, it's just such a fun journey to take as a character. I will be horribly in love with her. The lady is disloyal. Hero. Pray you dissuade him from her. How are you doing? 
are you? Nice to see you. Very well. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome to the UK. Oh, my pleasure. We're so happy to be here, and a little bit, a little bit nervous and excited to be bringing Shakespeare to his doorstep. You should be proud, actually. Oh, thanks. That's kind of you. So, the much ado about nothing. What it, what does it mean to you as a as a play? Oh my goodness. Well, it's really the original romantic comedy, isn't it? Uh, that everything follows from this. Uh, Hepburn and Tracy, and you know, all of the warring, sparring lovers that followed that uh, should have been together and didn't know it. You know, it starts with Beatrice and Benedict in this play. So, uh, on the other hand, I tried to forget all of that and just do it. Two very complex lovers, aren't they? Yeah, they are. There's a com complicated story, and uh, there's a, an, a, a sort of evolution of character for both of them that uh, we try to honor, but also just have a lot of fun. You know, that's the, that's the key. I think the fun we had shooting it. Uh, is very much captured on the on the screen. You can see you can see it the the kind of the enjoyment that we're taking in it. You can say, see that as well, and it's also a contemporary piece. So did you have to change not change the dialogue, but the way you delivered the dialogue? Did, yeah, did I, mean, have my, to change? I think as a as a company, our approach was that this this play is in prose. It's not a, it's not iambic pentameter and rhyming couplet. You know, there, there's an opportunity here to just relax into it and almost let the audience find the beauty of the language rather than have it presented to them and that that was certainly the choice I made particularly as Benedict is a soldier so I wanted to kind of honor the fact that that uh, that he's a man of action uh, who expresses through language but he is quintessentially a man of action I've tried to sort of find that in this in the story to the death my lord the yeah a little bit um uh, I wasn't expecting any of this. So I'm only a friar. It's a big friar. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, you're saying you're only the friar, but if it's not down to the wisdom of your role, the whole story could turn in a completely different way, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's, um, you know, I, 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 when I was first um, offered the, the role, I was thinking, well, what is it? Is there something other about this man? And then I thought, no, he's more like a... A, a, a confidant, a mafiosi confidant. I thought, no, you can't do it like that. I mean, this is, I didn't really know what he was, you know, so um, it was a case of just, you know, learning the lines and just letting the, the words do the work for you. You know, it's as simple as that. I love you so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Are you supporting Josh? I am indeed, yeah. And uh, obviously, you're not short of, of playing um, Shakespeare yourself on the on the screen. So, what is it about uh, Shakespeare that translates so well from stage to screen? Um, I, I honestly, I think it's just Shakespeare's um, amazing understanding of humanity. He, he uh, you know, all you all, all you have to do really is, is try and align yourself with his perspective on being alive. You know, the the the, uh, the crazy things that we do and and. We fall in love and we fall out of love and we get in our own way and we get jealous and, and we get proud and, and we're funny and we're tragic and you know and Shakespeare's just got the most kind of forensic and compassionate angle on that so Do you think as well that um, his imagery is, is accentuated on the on the screen where we can see close-ups we can get a closer relationship to what Shakespeare's saying? Certainly you can I mean you can the camera can be very intimate with an actor's face so um, there's more opportunity to play against the text or to play alongside it. So you can, you know, you can you can play with the possibility of subtext. You know, the flick of an eye, the curl of a lip can say as much as a line. But but actually, it's all in it's all in the text. Shakespeare had it down. So um, as long as you speak it, um, how did he say? Um, speak the speech trippingly on the tongue. Don't saw the air. You know, he gave him in. There's a, the first player or the Hamlet speech to the players in Hamlet. Um, is the best sort of paragraph of acting notes you could possibly hope for. Sweet hero, she's wronged. Bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. Both looking forward to this evening. Very Absolutely. much so, definitely. I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this. I keep pestering Josh saying, when's, when's he coming out with New England? When are we going to see it? And it's coming, and it's here. So, yeah, it's fantastic. What's so special about Much Ado About Nothing? Uh, it was shot in Josh's house over a week. Uh, it's something that I, n I nearly did. Well, he did ask me to do something in it, and I just couldn't make it by two days. And then my show got cancelled, so it was like... <coughs> but um, we used to do Shakespeare readings when we were doing Buffy. We used to, we used to hang out on a Sunday night. So um, Josh has a, a really, really good feel. In fact, I said over there, he's the best Hamlet I've ever seen. 
Seriously. Really? Really. <laughs> and, so, and we're also seeing this film in black and white. Yes, well, it was always, it was always planned in black and white. What do you think adds but tonally to a movie having a film in black and white? Do you think does it capture more mood and atmosphere? I think it's a it's a it's a genre thing. It sort of yes, it's like it suddenly becomes a well, a film noir. Um, but it's yes, it's it's a it is a tonal thing. I've always always loved black and white photography, and black and white films are very rare because it's 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 quite daring, but it's in this day and age. But it's really 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 nice to see it. You are a villain.